Go. Oh, there we go. I'd like to uh, introduce a, a testimony. And it's a testimony from a guy that's, uh, he'll, he won't like this, but he's a local hero. Now, and I mean that in all sincerity. Jack Steptoe is the coach over at COD football team, all right? He's been coaching in the desert for more than 30 years. Coach Steptoe worked as the head football coach to develop players athletically and academically, preparing his young men to transfer into a four-year college. Jack emphasizes good football fundamentals, the importance of education, self-discipline, and playing a game with enthusiasm. His coaching skills have allowed him the joy of coaching many all-conference receiving all-state recipient over the years, as well as many other accomplishments. We could go on, but it's a real honor. We, we, ha we have a partnership with COD, with our church, and uh, we love the team and the guys, and any time we do this cross-pollination is wonderful. The college right across the street, we're here, and it's been a win-win. So with that, Coach. I tell you, boy, this has been, you know, when Earl was talking about when I got up in the morning, and when I got up, I was fine, you know, I was just saying, I said, I just can't wait to get over here, you know, to get, about, get around a bunch of men. And, uh, you know what, I looked in the mirror and I felt real good about myself. Uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. Uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, where I come from, uh, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. I went to graduate from Locke High School, uh, did my community college in uh, L.A. Valley College out in San Fernando Valley, and then I, got, I, was, I was rewarded with a scholarship to the University of Utah. So the University of Utah is where I graduated from, and from there I went to the Chicago Bears. Um, so I bounced around a lot. I, I want to testify to you about a lot of you, my young men that I've coached over the years don't know this about me. I'm also a recovering alcoholic and dope fan. You know, and by the grace of God, one day at a time, I'll have 30 years on September 1st. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of my players look at me like, what? They get that look on their face, you know, but uh, you no, know, it's a funny story how that I ended up following the path of God. I'm going to tell you, this, so tell you this, and it's a true story. Even when I started coaching, after I retired, and I was 28 years old, I retired in 83, um, you know, I was still practicing, drinking, drugging, doing all those things. And I was a hypocrite, you know, and I was coaching these young men. And uh, something happened, you know, I was out there partying up a storm and telling these young men they shouldn't be doing this, right? And, uh, you know, through those travels, I ended up in the, I was already in hell and didn't know it. And uh, what happened was, I remember like it was yesterday. In 1992, I was sitting on the Palm Springs courthouse steps. And I called over to the ABC club in Indio and said, hey, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I tell you what, let me tell you how I got there. The guy that I used to buy my dope from came and picked me up. <laughs> now, if they, I honestly believe that God works through people. And when he worked through David to come get me, I knew that it was time for me to get correct with Jack and you could get correct with God. And David came to pick up, I remember, I said, like, David, and I go, oh, he's like, hey man, I'm doing this and I'm gonna come get you because you kill it yourself. Now this is, I said, look, you selling this stuff. You know, and you're gonna tell me, what? You need to get in that book and learn this and that. I'm like, man, please. I went to the ABC club and that was 1992 and I ain't never looked back, you know. Uh, but there was a lot of discovery. <laughs> that I had to find out. A lot of discovery. Uh, one of the things was that, uh, you know, I was, God, you know, I remember, the, remember my, uh, my mentor and sponsor told me, he said, Jack, if they popped your head open and 
and, and anybody look in, they would take off running. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I had to do an inventory. I had to look back and, 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 and figure out what is it that I wanted to do with myself. Uh, so as a result of that, I, you know, how that happened was when I started coming on, you know, I was, I never did a lot of laughing. And what I loved about being around here, the laughter, the joy. And my calling is this, it is my responsibility, and I think Joseph and I were talking about this yesterday, I have a responsibility to carry the message. And I have, this responsibility is put on me through God, even if I want it or not. I had to come to terms with that, and guess what? I was such a selfish, and all I cared about was Jack, and I didn't care what I did to you. And once I sat down and started looking at my inventory and looking at the things and looking at the other people share about God and Jesus Christ, uh, I had to look at the similarities. I had to look at the things that I did do opposed to what I hadn't done. Because then, and even then, I was still trying to separate myself as being unique. The bottom line is, and I'm a human being just like everybody else. You know, I'm a child of God. And so what I did was I took those learnings and then I had to practice because faith without works avails you nothing. Nothing. And through that faith builds trust through action. So I had to get into action. So what I did was in my recovery, in my coaching, I have the greatest gift that God gave me was to be able to get, share my experience, strength, and hope with my players. Right? Being, I've been there. I've been in their shoes. You know, I've built relationships. I've been with College of the Desert. This is my over 30-something years. I've taught as an instructor. I've been, I did security for seven years while I taught and instructed. And now I've been back 15 straight years as an assistant coach. It took me 20 years to get the head coaching job, and this is going into my ninth year. I'm a road runner for life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember I was telling the story when I came here to the desert. Man, I, shoot, I was living, I lived in La Jolla. <laughs> Played with the Chargers, did all that. I lived in La Jolla. I lived five minutes from the beach <laughs> on Gilman Drive, right down the street from UCSD. And I came here and called my parents and said, why would anybody want to come here? <laughs> and it was 122 degrees. <laughs> I, I got my fiance, we got to the hotel, I called my parents and said, hey, mom, where's everybody at? <laughs> she said, they in the house. Ain't nobody come out so dark. I said, mommy, y'all been dying with the hell here, boy, because this is, this is too hot for me. But, uh, <laughs> Through my travels, uh, this is not about me. Uh, I represent the College of the Desert. I represent God. Uh, I tell my players, guys, this is an op JC is an opportunity for you to change your ending. That it be give you this, the, this, this, the power of hope uh, and change and to tell them the truth because see, I've made enough mistakes for you guys that I can share my experience with you that if you go down that road, I, I can tell you exactly what you're gonna get if you go down that road. I tell the kids my biggest promise to them that God has told me to tell them is this, I always tell them the truth. I don't lie to my players. Because I remember Pat Hill and all these guys that coached me, Jim Fossils, all these guys that I've been experienced. And I asked him, he said, Jack, you're the only one that's still coaching out of all the coaches that have coached you. Uh, you got one great responsibility. I was like, well, then just be honest. And I've been honest with my kids, you know, that have grown into men. I teach them how to know that my door is always open. They can come and sit down and talk to me. I talk with them. You got to remember, the generations are changing. We're in that cyber age. I mean, these kids, man, they, got, they believe everything they, hit, they see on the phone, man. And I've had to adjust to that, you know. And I have to stay available for change. 
I have to evolve with the guys that I coach and the students that I come in contact with. I love what I do. They have no idea. They fill me up every day. You know, they give me a great sense of self. And the theme has been coming out of myself for God, for other people. And that's when, and guess what? I had it twisted. Once I, once I came out of myself, guess what? It comes back tenfold to me. It really does. And to be selflessness gets you in touch with self. And the more that I come out of myself with, uh, with for other people and without any conditions, I don't place conditions on that. Because, see, I, you know, I know I'm a liar, thief, and a cheat. See, I realized that. But I didn't have to stay that way. I had to take drugs and alcohol all the way off the grocery list. Because they were at the top of my list for a long time. And what I share with these guys is the truth. I provide them an opportunity to get your education. You're here to get an education. Football is a privilege. It's not a right. So there's certain things that have to go, certain things you have to do to be able to be allowed that privilege of playing this game that we call football. And get an education. You know, be a good part. I run a great mentorship program. I have a very disciplined program. I don't play games. I tell you the truth, if you come out here, you're going to get a great opportunity to compete. And if you're a guy, you will play. It's our, guy, it's our job as coaches to get the best player on the field to give us the greatest opportunity to win. And this is what I do. I've been very lucky to surround myself with guys like myself that believe in that same philosophy. I talk with my players. I don't talk down. It ain't back like the old days. It wasn't uncommon to get grabbed by your face mask and get drunk. <laughs> I mean, I know it's happened to me when John Becker grabbed me on the face mask and said, if you do that again, I'm going to kill you. You know, I mean, it was, and, and that was, you know, a, a, a sick way of love. You know, that, he loved me. He, he cared enough about me to grab me and do that. Do that today. <laughs> you won't be working that nowhere. They call that abuse. But from where I come from, to where I am right now, I'm comfortable in my own skin. And I don't know about you, but that's pretty damn good for me. That I can be comfortable in my own skin, you know, and I can continue to evolve and grow and stay teachable. I need to stay teachable. So every time, I've learned so much just being here today. And I keep my mind open that I heard so many things that just brought me joy to my heart. You know, and I looked at those similarities that some of the gentlemen before me had, had talked about, pastors had talked about. It was just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I laughed, you know, and said, hey, man, how true is that, you know? I've had a lot of players, like I said, I'm coaching. It's so funny, I was just telling some gentlemen back there that this is my second generation of coaching. I've coached players and now I got their kids. <laughs> So it kind of aged me a little bit, but I know it looked good. Though. Still look good. They keep me young. But I ain't running out there running no 40 or nothing. Uh, and I ain't picking this up. I'm going to have them big fellas come over and do it. That's what I do. But, uh, no, I mean, uh, the I got a real quick story, and then I'm going to sit down and shut up. Because I have a tendency to get all over the place. And thank God I didn't have four or five cups of coffee. And then you wouldn't be able, wouldn't be able to get me out of here. But there I remember a story about uh, faith and trust. And uh, I remember there was this great tightroper, and he was practicing walking across Niagara Falls. And he had a great following. And as he's practicing, everybody's down on the, on the platform there, back in the crowd, cheering him on. So as he's walking across, he looks back and says, hey, do you have believe that I can walk across? They said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're the greatest type boper in the world. Greatest type boper in the world. We believe. Kept walking a little bit further. He turns back to this and says, do you have faith that I can do it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you're the greatest in the world. You're the greatest in the world. Walks, gets in the middle. Stands there and looks back and says, 
do you have trust that I will do it? Oh, yeah, we trust you. He said, well, why don't one of you guys get on my back and go across with me? <laughs> so faith without works avails you nothing. Without that one foot in front of the other, great to have faith, to all wait to believe. I've always been taught to watch what they say and see if they walk the way they talk. Now, that's a reality, you know, and I've been around a lot of people, I love people, but I listen to what they preach and then I walk to, watch to see as they talk, walk the way they talk. And, and, and believe me, I walk the way I talk, you know, and so with that being said, you know, I'm on a spiritual path, I got a higher power who I choose to call God, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing so I can keep getting what I'm getting. And I'm not going to deviate from the plan because see, every time I take the wheel, I, I, I get ready to crash and burn. I never put a question mark where there's a period with God. I never do. And God told me, you can't think your way into good living, Jack. You have to live your way into good thinking, Mr. Steptoe. It's all about behavior. You know, so, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Hopefully, I know it's been evident to me that it's got on my kids over the years. They've gone on to be successful men, husband, wife, sons. I mean, and that's my biggest happy. It's not about patting me on the back. They, they get all the glory, you know, so Hopefully you heard something that you could use, and if you haven't, practice a little praises and tolerance because guess what? God ain't done with me yet. That's good.